Okay, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm here today with uh, Kaya, uh, uh, returning to the podcast after joining us on episode uh, 50 something. Probably. 49, I think it was. 49, yeah. okay. Um, in that one, we talked about uh, moving to the UAE, and now Kaya is, is with me in the UAE. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And uh, yeah, how's it going so far? Alhamdulillah, bro. It's, it's good. We yeah. had a little barbecue today so yeah. it was it was nice it was nice been here about a month and a week now so alhamdulillah how's well. uae it's nice bro it's sunny it's um family orientated i think anybody who listened to episode 49 mm. what i said in in there what i expected to be it's been pretty much what mm. i expected to be no surprises no surprises the only only issue or surprise is how long my visa is taken mm. but other than that mm. alhamdulillah i can't complain it's honestly been other than the visa situation, it's been smooth, it's been mm. enjoyable. Other than missing family, mm. can't complain. Alhamdulillah. Good. So, you know, when I look, I, we don't do it much, yeah, but when we look at the numbers, the downloads and all that, okay. consistently, anything that has the word marriage in gets a <laughs> yeah, lot of downloads. Yeah. Yeah. Like a few episodes ago, I did, uh, like the episode was not particularly about marriage, but I just threw the word in the title. Mm. And that one, like, got a lot of downloads. Bit, yeah. I mean, it, it, we, <laughs> we, we did speak about it, but it wasn't like, like yeah, one of the main topics. Yeah. Um, and today, of course, we're here to talk about um, marriage, but specifically, I think we'll talk about like um, navigating, like uh, getting married, finding someone, etc., online. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because that's what that's what you're coming in for for the for the experience that you have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's just start a little bit on in terms of like uh, one even wanting to get married, right? So. Mm. Is that like something you wanted to do from a young age or like? Yeah, I always, I always um, saw myself being married by about 25. Mm. And this was even before I was like properly practicing. I started practicing mm. properly. I started beginning to practice it from about 16. Mm. I'd say it took me like a three year transition period. Mm. But even around that time, I was like, yeah, I want to be married at 25 and have a, have a kid or two, mm. inshallah. So Allah. why is that? Like, I don't know. you know, you didn't have the thing of, you know, need to get married, uh, you know, need, need to get married for religious reasons, per, you know, mm. uh, you just, you know, what was it? Was it? Your... I just, I, I like, I like the idea of having a family. Oh. I wanted to be a family man, I suppose. Okay. Um, yeah, it just, it just sort of, it just suited my personality to see myself oh. in 10 years time being married and having a kid maybe or two kids mm. by the time I was 30. Mm. Um, I didn't really see myself as like being even before I was like practicing, like being like a single guy in my thirties or something like that. Mm. Didn't really cross my mind. So. What about like, you you have uh, siblings, yeah? So yeah. do you think that they have the same thing? Is it from your upbringing, Annie? No, I mean, my older brother, mm. he didn't get married until he was 28, 29. Okay. I think it was 29. So, yeah. and in, Tur in, in Turkish culture, um, you know, I don't come from like a practicing family. Mm. I don't come from a practicing culture. Uh, Turkish Cypriot culture mm. is like, you know, very hot and cold mm. when it comes to the Dean. Um, so it's very common, almost encouraged really to, to not get married young right. and to wait, mm. you know, see what's out there kind of thing. And mm. if having girlfriends, boyfriends is encouraged actually. Mm. So okay. yeah, yeah, literally encouraged. So. so your parents wouldn't have minded? What, girlfriend, boyfriend? Mm. Not at all, no, they wouldn't have mm. minded. Okay, yeah. didn't know. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so you're saying you, but I mean you, your your brother. Okay, he got married when he was a bit older, but he still got married. Mm. So, is that just his? You would say it's his personal preference, or no? The, the the Turkish culture is that you do get married. Yeah, and if you do wait too long, then yeah. then that's a problem as well. Okay. So if you're in your in your forties mm. and you haven't married mm. yet, mm. then it's like, oh, you know, what's a problem? Okay. Let's help you out to get you married. Mm. But there's definitely like. Mm. Oh, you should be boyfriend girlfriend for like three, four years yeah, first. Understood. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. I just remembered that film, um, uh, My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Oh <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because of the whole uh, Turkey, um, Cyprus, etc. thing. Right. So, um, yeah, uh, what I was gonna go on to is the idea of so you getting married early. Yeah. So then, what about when it comes to like actually I'm trying to turn to looking, you, bro, yeah. Look, yeah, yeah, looking for someone like. Um, mm. was, was, was there an age when you're like, okay, I'm going to take this seriously? Yeah, there was. I was mm. probably about a year and a half or a year before I did get married. So mm. that's what, 2015. I was probably about 23, 20 to 23. I think 23. Mm. Um, and I was maybe serious. I was looking 
unseriously for about six months in the sense that I wasn't in a rush to get married. Okay. And I was never in a rush to get married, but you know, I was looking, I was, I was seriously looking. Yeah. But then after six months, when I hit, you know, age 23, 23 and a half, whatever it was, mm. I started to get more serious about it. Mm. And I just felt like it was time. Mm. Like, you know, I was taking, by that point I was taking Dean more seriously. Mm. It just felt like uh, that was the right thing to do. Mm. So, so when you, was the trigger like taking your Islam more seriously? Not really, because I've been taking Islam, I mean, yes, but yeah. I, the two didn't coincide that, that close together. You oh, know? Really? I, would, I, was, I was practicing Alhamdulillah from like oh. age 20. So if you weren't practicing, you still would have maybe got married pretty early. Hmm. I don't know, maybe not as early. Oh. Maybe I would have waited another year or two. Yeah. And again, it would have been like, if I wasn't practicing, it would have been like, I want to find a long-term girlfriend rather than get married, you right. know, and then that will lead to marriage. Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably yeah, the mindset I would have had if I... Mm. I yeah. think that's pretty... I don't know, it's, is that different to most in the UK? Like, let's say, uh, non... Hmm. Obviously, uh, I know in the UK, like, uh, well, even, yeah, just compared to average person in the UK, do you think most of them are like that? Yeah, I think that's pretty much, mm. that's what, that's why, you know, our, our community in London has that view. You should have the girlfriend for a while, then get married if you like her, mm. because that's the societal mm. norm. But yeah. what about even non-Muslims? Yeah, even non-Muslims, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. so like, this is like the non-Muslim stuff. Yeah. yeah, you find, you have mm. three or four girlfriends, so you find a good one, yeah. then you stick with her for three or four years, yeah. and then you get, then you get engaged for another yeah. year, and yeah. then you get married. Yeah. And that's yeah. pretty much the same sort of... Because um, they still have, like, I think, I, can, I guess it depends maybe in which area, which class, a social class maybe, but there is still a lot of the aspiration of getting married and having a family for many people. Not everyone. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's kind of dying out. So, yeah. you, I mean, I've, I have one um, non-Muslim friend who's like, he was telling me he just doesn't want to get married. He's got, he mm. had like a long-term girlfriend. Yeah. He doesn't want to get married. Mm. And the only reason he would get married is because like his, his um, girlfriend is basically forcing it, you right. know? Mm. But in his view, yeah. there's no need and there's no yeah. desire for him to do that. Mm. <clears throat> and I think that's quite widespread. Mm. That segment- Among of, men, of, among, among men especially. Yeah. That segment of the society is probably growing. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. So, okay. So now, yeah. So what does it look like to, yeah, and he, uh, be looking but not that seriously what did you mean by that yeah good point so i was i attended um a marriage event at my local mosque mm. palmer's green mosque mm. um they had like a marriage thing okay and i just attended that without any sort of high hopes without i was serious but mm. i just didn't think you know anything would come of it come okay. of it and it didn't in the end mm. What was that event like? Is like uh, that? Um, it's kind of like a speed dating. Yeah, event. it was kind of like okay. speed dating with the yeah, the yeah. mahram there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the 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 women would sit with their older brother or their dad or whatever, and then the men would go around. Yeah. You'd have like two minutes to talk to each yeah, sister. Yeah. So, so at one point you talk to like a, a nineteen year old sister, then you, you talk to like a fifty one year old sister. Really? You know, and then like sometimes you sit down, you, there, there's immediate like we know we're not going to get married, <laughs> but let's just chat for a second <laughs> until the bell rings. Yeah, yeah. So it was interesting. It was fun. Yeah. Um, but nothing really came came of it. Um, do you think those would work though? I think they did work with some people. Yeah, I think they did. What uh, about um? Because obviously those events is the only thing that, yeah, the 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 women you might be talking to there, it's not like they have your criteria in mind when they're kind of that's right. people together. It's very right? very so random. Like age is random, ethnicity, background, everything. Yeah. So hmm. So cut, cut sure. it, isn't it? If, it, if it's if it's, if yeah. it's written to be you're you're gonna find your wife there, yeah, it's possible. But I just wonder how they, because I think it, I find it a bit strange they do it like that. Because surely you would at least um, segment it by age group, for example. You know, I think I just don't think there was enough interest. Like, oh, okay, there was yeah. maybe like twenty sisters oh, there. Yeah. So if they segmented it, it would be like the, just four sisters for yeah, each category. Yeah, yeah. It would be like, Makes there's sense. no point. So mm. they, they tried their best. It wasn't a great. Yeah. It wasn't fantastically. Ex mm. I mean, it was more executed given the situation. Yeah. But you're right. It's not you know mm. to the to the level of mm. like some of the apps that you find out there mm. these days. That was a uh, in a masjid. Yeah. Masjid arranged that. Mm. I I went to one actually not for myself. I was uh, kind of performing there or whatever. And um, yeah, I found it very awkward. It was think, awkward, yeah. I think I was, uh, I don't know, I might have been 22 or something at the time. So I wasn't really looking to get married seriously at that time. So I just, I was like enjoying it, you know, no pressure on me. Yeah. I was just like, how does this thing work? Like, do people actually come here? And I think what I noticed is, um, at least this one, it was in Birmingham, I think. And 
I think a, it was a place where a lot of the um, well, maybe this is just the the the, the cross section of, of of the Muslim community is that there were a lot of like seemingly less practicing people mm. uh, there because they still want to get married. In yeah, the end. yeah. Um, so I don't know. It's something I remember. So you that was that was like when you were less serious, if you like. Yeah. You just went to like a event and just try it out. Kind yeah. Of thing. Okay. Yeah. So what changed after that? You said that was like six months. Yeah, I had about six months of that, and you know, yeah. in that six months, I went to that one mm. event, mm. and I was just sort of you know thinking about if I am going to get serious, what would I do? Mm. Right. So in that six months, I was just sort of like pretty much more talking to myself rather than actually doing anything, right? Mm. And then after, you know, I started, I, I told myself, okay, I need to start because I knew it would be a process, right? I didn't, I didn't think, you know, you start in January and you're married, you're married by, yeah. you know, April, yeah. right? I knew it was going to be a process to find a sister. Yeah, yeah. And after you find it, it's another process. Mm. So I thought I should start now and then, you know, when I'm 24, 25, inshallah, mm. I, I may be married, right? Mm. So what I did is I found more of those events, but in central London this time, it's not local. Mm. Uh, I, I still attended, I think, one more um, Palmer's Green event as well. But I, there was one in Russell Square, I think mm. it was, and um, just larger and pretty much the same concept, but they had like four groups and then the brothers moved from one group to mm. the other. Just the just same, same mm. kind of thing, but larger more scale. People. More, yeah. more people, more mm. sisters. Uh, so wait, when you're going into this, you. you it seems like you had a very realistic view of it, yeah? Like, oh, it might take a year, it might take a bit longer to find someone and then get married, you know, it takes longer mm. and all of that. Like, where do you get that idea from? I don't know. I mean, I just, I, I knew for a fact that, again, my, my, my parents couldn't necessarily help me find somebody because I wasn't looking for uh, a non-practicing mm. girl, right? I, I was looking for a specific type of girl who was a practicing Muslim mm. and who was interested in marriage from the get-go, not to be boyfriend, mm. girlfriend. Mm. My parents and family didn't have any contacts like that. Right. Right? My, my community mm. doesn't have people mm. like that, typically. Mm. Yeah. Um, so but they I'm, would have tried if you asked they did, them. They did, and they did, and they did oh. try. They did oh. say to me, can we help? Oh. Um, and, and my dad did know one practicing family, but it wasn't, mm. we weren't compatible. Mm. So that was it. So I knew that was a very... A, a, a dry well, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I just thought, you know, it, it has so to, you'd it has have to, be to a do process, it by right? yourself, basically. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And going into it, did you have criteria clearly? Annie? Yeah, I had. So, I had some. So you knew what you were doing, Yanni, very much. Because yeah, what I've heard of a lot when speaking to people is that literally, like, they really, really desperate to get married, but mm. they don't even know what they're looking for. Yeah, that's... And I that's saw a, that quite, quite often. That's a big mistake, man. And that's what yeah. I mean. In those in those first six months, that's what I meant. Like, when I was talking to myself, I was like, what do yeah. I actually want, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. I want to get married, okay. Yeah. But what kind of girl do I want to marry? Yeah. Where, where should she be from? What yeah. kind of personality should she have? Does she yeah. have to have the same personality as me? Yeah. All these kind of questions, right? Mm. So I worked out a criteria. I don't I mm. think I wrote it down, mm. but I had um, it in my mind at least. Mm. And um, yeah, I mean, and that's not to say that I had like some like set in stone criteria, right? I mean, I was flexible with it. Yeah, yeah. I just had some deal breakers yeah, yeah. and I had some, um, you know, bonuses where it was like, not doesn't have to be, but if she has these qualities or these traits, mm. then that's even better. Mm. And that's it. And then once you have that sort of f foundation, you can be flexible without, and you just say to yourself, okay, I like this sister. Does she break any of my deal breakers? No, she doesn't. Mm. Does she have any of the bonuses? Or she's got two of the four mm. bonuses, so pretty good. I mm. like her. Mm. Let's continue, you mm. know? Mm. And then you can continue. That way you've actually got, mm. that way you're not going to fall into the emotional stuff as well, yeah, right? Yeah. Where it's like, oh, wow, she's so beautiful, mm. but oh, she breaks like three mm. of my four deal breakers. Yeah, yeah. So if you have them from the beginning, yeah. you could sort of, you know, reference that and say, you know, be real, bro. But why did you know to have these like deal breakers, for example? I think that's just like that's just from the, yourself. That's, yeah, yeah, it's the mature thing. To do. I mean, mm -hmm. I must have done some research. I must have done. I must have watched mm -hmm. some Mufti make videos or something like right, okay. on the marriage stuff, right? And said, mm -hmm. I, I just can't remember off the top of my head right now. But you were the guy giving us all the downloads on the marriage episode. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not yeah. you, but your younger version yeah. of you is now doing that. That's right. That's right. I was probably I, and I was. Mm -hmm. I say probably, but I was, I was doing. Yeah. That. Again, I mean, everyone months, does that. Yeah. yeah. I was researching. I was. Um, watch, I was definitely watching lectures of like how to find a spouse all that. I was watching all that mm. kind of stuff from so, Muslims yeah yeah of course of course mm. so yeah it must have come from that, mm. come from that. Well, that's pretty pretty mature I think and you you were 24 or three, 23 or? I think mm. I was 24 when I got married so yeah mm. so that's pretty ahead of the game so okay. long bro yeah so we're gonna take a break now for Salah and then we'll be back inshallah um, and that that music was not the karma that was <laughs> We're not, we're not weird out here. <laughs>
Okay, see you when we get back. Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. We're back after going to Salah. Um, and we were talking about, um, like, when you were first getting serious, I think. So yeah. when you were, you know, in your quote-unquote, like, just thinking about, you think about basically your criteria and stuff like that. Yeah. W would you share your criteria or is it private? No, it's not private. Um, like, okay, what about you? Because, you know, I think the concept of deal breakers is really good. Um, yeah. And it's something that, you know, f like me a long time, I was um, I was wanting to get married, but not looking at all because I, right. I didn't feel um, able to get married, right? Um, and in those years when I wanted to, but not really trying, I was learning a lot, mm -hmm. you know, from, from seeing friends get married, from reading and stuff like that. And after all those years of like looking into, I'm like, I'm generally interested in like um, psychology relationships and stuff. And this came up a lot, you know, the idea of deal breakers. Yeah. And it really makes a lot of sense. Uh, even where, like it's way more useful, I think, than, um, for example, okay, um, I, for example, I'm, uh, I have a bad temper, so I need someone who's very calm. Mm. Like that stuff, like I think deal breakers, for example, is way more useful than that uh, because it's something that maybe yeah. it's more binary. Yeah. It's easy to identify and all of that. So what, you know, what were your uh, deal breakers? Yeah. Um, my deal breakers, if I remember them correctly, it was that she should, the, the biggest one obviously was like the prayer, right? So she had to be praying five times a day. Okay. And that had to be like something she was already doing, not yeah. something that I'll, I do it, I pray Fajr, but when we get married, I'll, I'll, I'll get better, I'll pray. No, she has to already be doing mm. that. So yeah. that was like the main one, mm -hmm. right? Mm. Uh, then hijab was the other one. Those were like the two big ones, and then after that, it was like. Um, so what about the details of hijab? Do you have any? Yeah, this, this is what I'm about to go into. So okay. again, I mean, my personal. I don't know if I'm going to go too deep into my personal criteria on that, mm. but um, it had to be. You know, mm. I wasn't. I wasn't expect. I wasn't trying to get married to a sister in niqab because I don't think I was at that stage anyway in my life to I was, uh, uh, my dean okay. level anyway. Okay. So I didn't think that was realistic for myself anyway. Mm. So I just had like you know hijab should be. Um, at least, you know, adequate Islamically, right? It should be adequate. It shouldn't be mm. like, she mm. shouldn't be covers you know, a condition. A cover, yeah, yeah, it's right. So that mm. was that was another um, mm. condition. And that was that from point of view of, like, I'm looking for someone who is, um, like, obviously not disobeying Allah. Yeah. Or was it like, somebody that wears X Y Z, you would assume they also do X Y Z. Yeah, both. That's a good point. I mean, when you. Mm somebody who does pray five times a day and they're doing these sort of the minimums really because for, mm. for a woman hijab is a minimum yeah. for, to you know to be mm. the, what is a minimum hijab anyway so yeah. i say um once they're doing that then you get an idea of you know how seriously they're taking the dean right mm. in general and mm. there's there's about 101 different ways you can think about how how to serious how serious someone take the dean when yeah. they're doing this or that in this yeah. situation that situation these two things for a woman mm. and there's other things for men mm. they will give you they'll let you know that okay they, they take it seriously to that extent. So I know that in these situations, in those situations that I may not be able to ask them about in that sort of pre-marriage meeting, mm. because it just doesn't come to mind, yeah. right? Just these weird random situations mm. and scenarios that can occur mm. in life. Mm. When you have those conditions met, you can sort of safely, Allah knows best, but you can pretty much safely assume that they're gonna be up to scratch, up to standard in those sort of weird and wonderful situations that you wouldn't cover. Mm. So okay. mm. those, were the, those were the main two. And oh, really that two there were like more there were more but those yeah. were the main ones that were the, the mm. real issues mm. other than that it was like um mm. make it flack for this but she shouldn't have been married before i didn't want to marry a sister who was mm. divorcing mm. personal preference i want nothing against mm. divorcing sisters and i think it's, it's fantastic that brothers should they should, people should make an effort to do mm. that i just personally i just it was my first, mm. you know my my preference right mm. um other than that it was just like general you know not being involved in any fascia, any anything like that, anything like outwardly, mm. you know, mm. um, what's the English word for that? <laughs> like just like Indecency. lewdness, lewdness, right? Mm. In her past as well as present. Mm. So. Oh, in the past even, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because because like for myself, and what I, what I meant by that is somebody who was like, <coughs> like when I was not not practicing, I I wasn't like mm. off the rails and okay, like on yeah. like doing drugs and like, you know what I mean? Oh. I wasn't like that. So yeah. I didn't want a sister necessarily to be that way either because 
I wanted her journey to be similar to mine. Right. That's pretty okay. much. That's pretty much what it was. Yeah, and cool. if maybe if I was a, a cocaine addict before I was on Dean, maybe that's maybe maybe sister like that would have been better for me. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it wasn't. So that's just the way it was. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I wanted someone who had a similar mm. journey to me. Mm. And if they had the if they had a weird and wonderful journey where it was like really wacky and off the rails and that kind of thing, and you know they used to be an alcoholic or something like this, and that was a deal breaker for me. Right. You know? mm. And again, not because there's anything wrong with. You know, sisters who mm. reform themselves mm. or revert sisters. Mm. I'm saying for me personally, those yeah. are my deal breakers because mm. I didn't want, put it this way, I already had a lot of obstacles to overcome with my family who weren't on um, this whole concept of getting married quickly it was mm. alien to them. Right. So I knew I had, I had obstacles to come. When I present the sister to my pa uh, parents, yeah. I, had, I had, had a mountain to climb anyway. So mm. I thought, let me make it easier on myself and make sure that, you know, I find a sister who is like similar to me in a lot of ways. Yeah. So that's what, those, a lot of deal breakers mm. were like, okay, if she's mm. too different for me in this way, mm. it probably won't work, that kind of thing. Okay, so those are the deal breakers, but obviously you had other things that were more preferences, but not deal breakers. Yeah. So what were your preferences in terms of like, or what was your thinking around like, uh, maybe where she's currently living? and maybe like uh yeah where she's uh originally from or yeah whatever so um again maybe this was a deal breaker but i think um she had to be living in england because i was in england at the time yeah and there was you know that i was hearing stories about brothers going to like canada to find a wife and oh i met this wife online and she lives in australia and i was like i don't want to get like if there's a sister who like who I, who I have an interest in, but she's in Australia, I'll just mm. call that deal breaker because it's just like, mm. I'm not looking to like <laughs> go mm. to Australia. Mm. Again, I'm thinking like family wise, how easy this is gonna be, how difficult it's gonna be. Yeah. So I, I, that was a deal breaker as well, I suppose. Mm. So living in England was like a must. Mm. Um, other conditions or other bonuses, like bo the bonuses list, right? This is like the, the additional stuff that will make it even better. Mm. Um, again, like me, Turkish Cypriot. At the time, that I, was a bonus. That was a bonus because I, uh, Alhamdulillah, I did marry a Turkish Cypriot sister, mm. um, but I did not expect it. And this was like one of those bonuses that I thought was like pipe dream bonus. Right. Because yeah. um, my, my community just doesn't have many practicing people, practicing sisters, mm. and living in England, England as well. Mm. And who are my age looking to get married? I thought it was like a long shot. Yeah, and yeah. it was a long shot. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Um, I found someone who, who, who fit that. Yeah. Fit that. Mm. And um, what but, else? So that was bonus, meaning other than other, like you were open to yeah. anyone pretty much. I, I would I would have been stupid to like only keep it at like Tokyo Cypriot oh, yeah. because I knew it was so too much to ask. Yeah, for too much to ask. Way. So I thought yeah. this is a bonus. I wouldn't mind marrying a sister from wherever yeah. as long as she lived in England and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I had no problem with that. Yeah. Um, other sort of bonuses, um, someone who likes to travel and was open to moving away from England at one stage, mm. you know? Mm. And um, because again, even at that time, I was thinking about mm. 10, 20 years time, I don't want to be mm. living here. Right. Plus I like to travel as well. So, oh, but that was still only a bonus. Yeah, because at that time I wasn't 100% mm. on it. Okay. You know, I didn't want to make that like a deal breaker because I wasn't a million percent sure, sure mm. that I was going to move away. It was mm. just something that I was thinking about. So um, yeah, those that was another sort of bonus. Mm. I should probably... <laughs> made a note of these before I come on the podcast, but I can't really have a bonuses right now. Yeah, I mean, whatever you remember, that's probably how, how important it is. Yeah, I suppose so. More. I mean, this, and this is it, I didn't, I didn't want to have a huge list. I probably didn't have a huge list. Yeah. Was maybe, I, may, I may be missing one or two things right now. Yeah. Because if you have that massive list, oh, I've got 17 deal breakers and 187 bonuses, mm, mm. Um, you know, mm. you're just making it more difficult for yourself. Of course. Yeah. So I wanted to keep it flexible. Mm. Like I said, I didn't, ma I didn't care what nationality she was her ethnicity, anything like that. I didn't mm. really care. I left that totally open. Mm. So yeah, other than that, I was just obviously looking at the quality of the Dean, quality of the character, mm. how she treats her family. Mm. Yeah, mm. that's pretty much it, man. So what about uh, when, when you were like considering people like, or, or think of your criteria, how do you think of, were you thinking of is my family going to accept X, Y, Z type of person? You know, for example, you know, for example, maybe if you, if you, you know, you're, you're interested in someone at Wes Niqab, maybe your family find that strange, etc. Mm. So was that, was that factored into your criteria? It was to an extent because, you know, my family were against this whole idea anyway, right? Of me getting married this quickly. Okay. And they were like, they were supportive or on the same hand, like, you know, they were telling me, you know, you sure? Like, it's really... This mm. isn't really like they strongly they recommended against it basically. Yeah, yeah. 
So I was already going against their wishes, so to speak, to do yeah, this. Yeah. So I wasn't totally sort of factoring in what my parents would um, find palatable mm. because I knew that none of this was palatable in the first place anyway. Mm. And beyond that, this is the, the woman I'm going to marry and have kids with. It's got to be right for me first and foremost. And then mm, I can yeah. worry about the, stuff, the parents after, right? Yeah. But you're right. I mean, I, it was in my mind that, you know, if I marry, um, you know, uh, uh, somebody who is outside of our culture and ethnicity, mm. who is also wearing niqab and she lives in Australia, mm. I knew for a fact that would be like 10 times mm. harder to sell yeah, yeah. than if she was a Turkish Cypriot girl, yeah. uh, so on and so mm. forth, right? So that played a part. But like I said, mm. I thought the Turkish Cypriot part was such a long shot that I was just like, I was actually telling my family one stage, like, you know, don't be, expect, don't expect that. <laughs> be prepared for me to bring home like a, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. a Yemeni girl yeah. or a yeah. whatever, yeah. you know, because yeah. I didn't think yeah. that I would find what I did find. Yeah. So I, I was kind of preparing, uh, tongue in cheek, preparing them for that. And they yeah. were like, OK, but yeah. I was kind of serious. Like, I thought yeah. that was what was going to happen. Oh. So, um, but yeah, I, I would say that I was first and foremost looking out for, you know, myself and my dean and making sure that my dean was going to be safeguarded my children's dean was going to be safeguarded with a good sister and then mm. after that i was worrying about mm. what my parents would think but but anyway like if you're not your parents specifically but amongst like turkish cypriots in the uk mm. what if you know let's say you wanted to marry a, a you know an english girl a white girl mm. would that be a problem like what do they usually do um that hasn't been a problem i i think my my cousin has married um, an English girl, mm. and there was there was talk about it, but it wasn't like rejection. You okay. know, it wasn't like you know how dare mm. he. It was there was talk in the family, you know. Mm. I mean, unfortunately, there there is that sort of tribal mentality in in all in all communities. Yeah, and that does play a role, but it's not mm. impossible. Mm. You wouldn't get like you know, excommunicated from the family for doing mm. something like that. It would but just, what's the norm? The norm is to get married to a Turkish girl. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Mm. I mean, it's, it, 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 it was spoken about in family because it wasn't the norm. Mm. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. okay, so now you went to this one, uh, you went to this event. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, it was, you know, it's difficult, basically. Uh, yeah. Okay, it was difficult. You weren't, you weren't, you know, gonna didn't seem like it was going to work. What happened when you were more serious and you were looking and stuff? What mm. did you... <laughs> This is gonna what turn, steps did you take? Yeah, this is going to turn into like a, an ad now for Muzmatch. <laughs> oh, was it that quick and direct, yeah? What? Like say, you went to one event, it wasn't good. No, no, no. Then... I mean, to be fair, I, I, when I first started, so I went to that one event in that, in that six month period where I was like kind of getting serious. Mm. Then I started to go to these other events, which was like once every three months they were. And then I started to sign up for different websites online, not just Muzmatch. Muzmatch came a bit later, actually. Mm. There was one called Pure Matrimony, which was pretty good, from okay. what I remember. Yeah. Sign up to that, sign up to mm. a couple of other stuff, mm. and just generally started to put the feelers out. Like I told my friend, I'm looking to get married. Yeah. I told a few people at the mosque, I'm looking to get married, mm. keep an eye out, that kind of thing. I told my parents, like, yeah. I thought maybe they've come across somebody. Mm. So, yeah, and I just sort of went. Wait, went was it weird? to tell your parents or did you tell your parents like uh, I'm look I want to get married they knew that and you know she's got to be praying and this and that did you say that to them yeah I said that yeah. they, and, and, they, and they knew was that I, weird yeah or well not totally because I was praying as well yeah. so I, I, I had already over yeah. over like a two three year period maybe longer than that mm. I had you know shown not just shown signs but openly said to them you know I'm practicing Muslim I, mm. I pray they see me pray mm. five times a day alhamdulillah uh, they see I eat halal meat um, so it wasn't a surprise when I said, you know, I'm going to get married and she should be like me, mm. you know? And they mm. were like, oh, what if we find you a girl? Because at first they were like, um, yeah, may Allah, you know, may Allah guide us all. Mm. They were like, you know, uh, we know religious men who sort of marry like, quote unquote, nor they didn't say normal, but they said, you know, normal women who don't practice and they just continue with their life. And, you know, they've got, uh, you know, a Turkish uh, wife and she yeah. does what she does and he does what he does and it, mm. it works. And I was mm. like, okay, it may work for them, but it's not going to work for mm. me. I want someone who's like me. Like mine did. I'd same like to see that. To be yeah, I don't, don't know if it would work. I don't know. Either. I, I mean, I've seen it. Might, it. Maybe work till they have kids. Yeah, it? I've I've seen it. I've seen it work. It just depends on what your definition of work is, you know. Okay. So and I've seen it in a family with kids, and mm. the kids grow up as you would expect. Really, not confused, but mm. torn. Yeah. Torn. I think is the right way. Mm. Right way to put it. Mm. Um. But yeah. I remember I met one guy. He's like. I'm half Christian and half Muslim <laughs> because you know my mom's Christian, my dad's Muslim. 
So, yeah, that's what <laughs> that's what it, that's what it can it can do. It can sort of just make it, it can trivial trivialize it, right? When yeah. oh your mum's this, your dad's that, everyone's cool. It's all the same. It's all the same. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It can trivial trivialize it. Yeah. So I didn't want to do that. I told them that. Yeah. It wasn't awkward. Mm. Maybe a little bit difficult because you know the, it, I had to sell them this idea that you know mm. I'm not going to get a girlfriend. Mm. I'm going to meet her if I like her. We're going to get married. I'm going to get the nikah done. Mm. And then that was hard to sell. Mm. But you know. Mm. I'd, by that point, I get used, I'd, I'd, I'd been used to sort of selling them, mm. you know, my my the, the the type of life I want to live. Mm. Weird so, life, <laughs> you know, to them, in, to, them yeah. to them, you know. Um, but yeah, mm. I'd say it was a hard sell, but not mm. awkward. Mm. So, so yeah, you said you 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 went to a few events, then you started going to the different websites. Yeah. So the event, tell me about the events because I'm interested. In yeah, it. man, they were they were interesting. That's for sure. Um, mm. So these these other ones in Russell Squ Square. Oh. You said it's regular, yeah. This I think I did it every three months, okay. every two months, right? Mm. Um, yeah, because I think I went to about four of them in the end. Mm. So what you, what happens is you go. It's a big hall. Mm. The brother sort of has a presentation set up, and he talks you through the presentation. This how the day is going to work. It's actually quite high tech. They had like um, mm. they had a few like how can I put it like. You know those restaurant buzzers, some, some, something mm. similar to that, to okay. time everything or something like that. Okay. Anyway, and they gave us all like numbers, right? So the brothers would be B seven, B nine, the sisters would be S fourteen, mm. whatever. So everyone had one of those, and it was all mm. registered inside the, the system, mm. and so it, nobody's name was known basically. Mm. And then what they did is they had four circles of chairs, and the sisters sat around uh, in the semicircle, mm. and the other chairs were empty, which where the brothers would sit. Mm. And then in each circle, I had four circles, each circle would discuss a different topic. Mm. So the first topic would be, what's your favorite food and why? Second, second table will talk about, um, you know, where's your favorite place to, where, where, where's the best place you travel to? So on and so forth. He's like, mm. little conversations. Prompts. Yeah. Mm. And then... Wait, so this discussion is happening between only two people, right? Not no, the no, whole no, group. no, 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 the whole group. Oh. So there's about, there's about five sisters and five brothers okay. all facing each other. That's what you're the yeah. mahrams are like in the corner. Mm. And um, yeah, it, you, it goes around the group and everyone shares their story or their view or whatever it is. And that gives you an idea in a sort of non, it's a good idea actually, it's better than the one-to-one -one because right. um, you get to see, if you look at a sister and you like her, you get to see what she's like in a group. You get to sort of see her for like five minutes and then you move on. Mm. Then once you go around, once the brothers go around all the tables, mm. um, you go back to the middle and then the sisters have to, uh, I think it was just the sisters. Yeah, the sisters have to select the brothers that they liked. Right, the brothers can't do anything. Okay. So the brothers sit there. So mm. you're, I'm, you know, I'm B seventeen. And I'm mm. just sitting there looking at the screen, and if my if my number gets called, <laughs> it means one of the sisters liked me, right? Okay. And then you go to another room with their mahram. You talk, and, and you, then you talk one to one. Then you talk one to one mm. with their mahram. Then you get a number, and you go from there. Mm. So it was kind of weird. Do you think the exercise of that group discussion thing actually brings out something about the person? I thought so. I mean, obviously, it's a five-minute group conversation. You're not going to bring out everything, but you get little, mm. you get an idea of what they're like. You know, you can see are they quiet, are they loud, are they, are they, you know, boisterous, whatever. Mm. You get to see what they're like, mm. but you can't. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just enough to say, okay, I want to talk to them one on one. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And probably a lot of the time, you you know, within ten seconds, if you want to talk to them one on one anyway, but it mm. allows you to, to um, sort of see them in a in a group mm. setting. And you didn't have any other information about them. Before Yanni, no, nothing at all. Mm. So you don't know like where they're from. You don't nope. know their age. No, just just based on looks basically, and then mm. whether they call you into the room to talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm. it was kind of weird. Like, mm. um, yeah, That's kind of the up. I thought it was weird the fact that the the women are the ones that to call, you know, to choose. Yeah. Because, because usually it's 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 the man who's gonna go and propose. That's right. Yeah. That was weird, and I think that probably. Mm. I would give them the advice mm. to change that around. Mm. I can kind of understand why. Because yeah. you know what would happen, I think. Basically, uh, out of the women, maybe like 20% of them would get all the men wanting to see them. Mm. And the others wouldn't. Yeah. The best looking one. That's, true. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I mean, there was there was one of those times when mm. I went and nobody wanted to see me. Mm. And I left kind of like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Confidence knocked a bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> that train journey home was a bit longer that time. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's true because I can see if that was his they should take it more to heart. Mm. Like I only cried for like two days after that. So. <laughs> yeah, with her, it might have yeah, been two weeks. Exactly. <laughs> so that's true. That's a good point. Mm. Um, but it was good. I think yeah. it was set up better than the Palmer's Green one because it was just like. Mm. Did you pay for it, by the way? 
Yeah, there was. It wasn't a big fee. It was like thirteen pounds or something like that. It was mm. right. It was fair. It yeah. was fair. And yeah. I think um, I, like I went there four times. I think mm. so. Mm. It's interesting though because it, yeah, in in one sense, like I'm not saying it's bad, but in one sense it's like, uh, okay, you're trying to see how people interact, which is a bit of a deeper thing. But then most of the choice really is going to be based on superficial stuff. Yeah. So it's. Uh, but don't forget, I mean, you're not you're not going to marry them based on that, right? It's just yeah, yeah. it's just mm. literally just mm. to see yeah. shall we talk privately mm. or not? You know, that's what it really mm. is. So. Yeah, maybe it's just pretending that it's not just based on looks. You know, oh, it's also based on the conversation. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> that's true as well. Interesting. Okay, so uh, you went to you said three or four. I think I went to three. Now I think about yeah. it. I must have been three. Yeah. I went to. Yeah. And uh, what did you? Yeah, what was your impression? Or oh, this isn't going to work for me, or what? No, I think I I thought what what it was like. The Palmer's Green one is it, the Palmer's Green one mm. is random, right? So you don't know. Are you going to get like one time I went? It was mostly like sisters over thirty. Yeah. Okay. Oh, mm. and that brings me to another one of my deal breakers. You had to mm. be with um, either younger than me or maximum two years older than me. That was another deal breaker. Mm. So um, two years. Huh? Maximum two years up. Mm. So. There was one time I went where it was like almost none of the women sisters mm. fit into that category. Just the mm. age one, forget mm. the rest of them, just the age. Mm. And I could see by looking they were they were older. So that was like mm. a waste of time. Mm. But I still thought, you know, it's random, which means if I keep going, yeah. maybe something will happen, yeah. right? So I thought it was pretty good, and I thought it was a good concept. It was the best, and it was the best thing that I had. There yeah. was no other events happening. It was mm. the best best thing available, mm. other than the online stuff. Yeah. So I thought, if you're serious, mm. none of your friends um, knew anyone, or not really. No, my friends. I had I had another uh, practicing friend who um, was also looking at the time, but not as seriously because he didn't think he was ready. Mm. Like he was sort of kind of looking. Okay. Um, but I was the only one who I knew mm. at the time seriously looking mm. uh, among my close friends. And in these events, were you not the youngest? Sometimes I was. Yeah. Not always though. Mm, I, I can't. I can't. I don't know the age of yeah, all the brothers. Know, yeah. But just by looking around. I, I thought I was the youngest most of the time. Yeah, mm. that was another. That was one of the issues that I had actually. That mm. sometimes the sister would tell me, "Oh, you're so young. Why are yeah. you looking to get married now?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, "I just I'm ready in it." But mm. yeah, that was one issue I had that I was quite young, and that sort of scene seemed to be a little bit older. Like, yeah, yeah, like our age now, kind of thing. Yeah, I think honestly, as much as people talk about getting married early, uh, young, and all that, and it's good and all of that. The truth is, I think most people are still looking uh, around. They start looking maybe at like 25, 6. That's true. Maybe. That's true. I think that's the reality. Yeah. For me, the delay was always like, maybe I haven't had a bit of a complex where it's like, you know, like, I guess because I see the, the role of a husband a lot to be providing and stuff. So I, I didn't feel ready, you know, money yeah. wise. So, but you, what were your thoughts on that? Um, you were working at that time? I was or? working. I, yeah. I had a, I had, um, I was a freelance writer at the time. Mm. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say my money game was on point. Mm. It was all right, mm. um, but I wasn't. My plan was either to, uh, to be honest, my plan was to move in with my parents. Mm. So, I was thinking, okay, that's that's sorted. Mm. Um, yeah, and I thought everything else I can handle, like the rent would be sorted, everything else mm. will be okay. Mm. Uh, and also, you sh you've also just got to have, you know, have some tawakkul and rely on Allah on that kind of thing. Not mm. to say that you should get married when you're absolutely poor and you've got no money, because mm. you know I'm, I'm pretty sure like scholars advise against that to do that. Mm. So you've got to be realistic as well. Mm. But if you're like making a decent amount of money, I don't think you should tell yourself, oh, I won't get married until I'm making yeah. four thousand pounds a month, because you don't need four thousand. You might be waiting forever. Yeah, yeah. and <laughs> you might wait forever. <laughs> but also, you don't need that much money, you yeah, know. Yeah. And yeah, you can be the provider, yeah. but you can be you can provide a little bit because mm. that's all you can provide, yeah. you know. And maybe that's just how it's mm. got to be, especially yeah. especially if the alternative is you waiting three, four, five years mm. and falling into something that you shouldn't be falling into, mm. you know. So you've got to weigh up these pros and cons as well. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, for me, my impression was, I guess it was a lot of imagining. Uh, my, my, like, I was imagining that. That I was gonna, it's not that I was like, oh, no, I need to make more, like that was a thing. But it was mostly thinking, you know, these these girls are gonna, you know, be used to a higher standard of living mm. than what I'm gonna. Right. You know. So yeah. Anyway, so now you're going. Uh, so your parents didn't really find anyone. Your friends didn't really find anyone. Yeah. These things, uh, the meet up event things, were okay, but just didn't really work yeah. out. So now you went, it was this like the final stage, yeah? Yeah, so the final stage, I'd heard about this new app called called Muzmatch. Mm. And Muzmatch, if you are watching, hit me up, we can do something, right? 
um, <laughs> Instagrams, sponsored content, stuff <laughs> like that. Um, yeah, so I heard about it. Me and my friend both heard about it. We both got on it together, right? Mm. And this is when it was first launched, okay? So it was, I think, I haven't been on it for, for years, obviously, but I've heard it's very different now than it was back then. Okay. So I'm going to talk about the features it had back then, mm. and it may not be applicable today, so I don't know. Yeah. But back then, it was like, it was actually really good because of how simple it was. And what you could do is you could filter, because some people use Musmatch back then, and today I think, kind of like Tinder, where you can use it to find non-practicing people. You know, mm. they're Muslims, yeah. but they're not practicing, and they're just like, they're looking for girlfriend-boyfriend mm. relationship, right? Mm. But what you could do is you could filter people by how religious they cla- they they say they are. Identify, right? Identify. That's, that's, that's the one. Not claim yeah. to be. Yeah. Um, so you could say, for example, praying five times a day only. Mm. So I was like, oh, sick! Like you know, that's one of that's my criteria. Thing, yeah. yeah. So okay, yeah. so cool. five times a day only. Yeah. Uh, you could set the location to only be within a like hundred mile radius, something like that. So you don't get people from Canada. So yeah. I was like, oh, well, this is actually quite good. So I was on it for a while, and there wasn't many sisters on it. Yeah. Um, for a while like I was on that app for about eight months I reckon I think mm. about eight months um, mm. until I actually found my wife mm. on it refreshing every yeah <laughs> every morning first got to do is like <laughs> what's going on in Muslim match um, but yeah I mean eventually the word got around and it started to sort of grow organically I think okay. at that time like they were enjoying some, some success well, how was this because I know uh, it's pretty new right how old is it Muslim match well now it's uh, I think like they're doing it launched then that was four years ago yeah so there must be a four or five years old yeah but that's new compared um, to like single muslim.com oh yeah, yeah as far yeah. as i know that's yeah. like a really big one that's true yeah. that's that i wouldn't recommend that one because okay. I, I signed up to that right mm. that was one of the first ones i signed up to mm. and i would get like emails from them saying oh sister mm. you know nadia 217 mm. message you and mm. you go onto the thing and it's like it's fake like it's oh. not real so i was like well, what kind of mm. system is what you kind have of... to pay to talk yeah to or, or, well even that they didn't even, they, nadia people. 217 didn't exist it yeah. was a fake profile created okay. by a single muslim to like make you feel make like you think hope. make you think like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you bought soap bro <laughs> mm. so i was like what kind of craziness okay. is that like yeah. i just got off that quickly mm. so um, and then what about pure matrimony that was actually pretty good and that was that was probably one where i found the most seriously practicing sisters on it okay um i think that was it's made by a, 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 a mercy mission okay I yeah okay i don't know who made it or, or yeah. what have you but mm. it seemed to be there was a lot more like practicing sisters mm. who were very serious about practicing mm. and i didn't find any non-practicing sisters on there mm. so i thought from that perspective it was really good mm. um but you couldn't see any pictures on there mm. and yeah that was the main thing you couldn't see any pictures on there which is fine at no point i don't think i'm trying to remember i think i think you had to initiate conversation yeah I never got this far with the app on that on that website, so mm. I don't know. But I think you had to have a conversation with them, and it was all monitored, so you're never like you know speaking mm. alone. Yeah. And then I think you can request a picture or something like that. Okay. Uh, whereas Musmatch, you could the sister could blur her face, or she could like pixelate it, or keep it like open, right? Mm. So yeah, I just I was I was just like scrolling through Musmatch for a few months, man, mm. until. And what what's the how does it work? I have no idea. Literally, uh, you just swipe. So um, you would find, you would see, like, you'd open the app mm. and you would see a sister's face mm. um, if it wasn't. Well, fixated. first you would create some kind of profile. Oh, yeah, right? you create your own profile. So you say for yourself, you know, I, I pray five times a day. Right. I consider myself very practicing or slightly practicing or whatever. You, whatever mm. you. you fill in your name, you fill mm. in your location, mm. um, age, age, your mm. ethnicity. Mm. And you can have a bio as well. So I think it's like 200, mm. 2,000 character bio, something like that. Okay. So you can actually get a bit creative with that. Use your uh, writing skills. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I did all of that. I did, did all you that. write um, poems? Or I, I had a little sonnet in there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, no. I kept it, I kept it like cool in it. I kept like, yo, just looking for a wife. Not trying to. Not trying to. I got <laughs> like two sentences, looking yeah. for a wife. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, you had all that. So, you had, so everyone mm. had a profile, basically. Mm. So. But wait, you know, ethnicity, mm. like, I guess it's, it's because, you know, like people in the UK, they're like, I guess they wouldn't say that about ethnicity they're, they're, because most people in the UK, they're like, I'm British. Like, what are you on about? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but the, this is ethnicity. So yeah. Okay. So that's right. There was, so you would see like Somali sister, mm. um, Afghan sister. I guess it's like when you fill in any kind of census or whatever. Yeah, that's right. It's that kind yeah, of Yeah, it wasn't a big deal. So too. what's your grouping for that? Interesting. So I put down Turkish with a Turkey flag, right? Because 
I consider myself to be Turkish. Right. So I'm, I'm from Cyprus. But is Tur that usually an option? Not in this, yeah. but in, in, you know, like government forms and stuff. Yeah, Tur oh, Tur option. Turkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it is an yeah, option. Yeah, it's okay. an option. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I put down Turkey. Oh, it was country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but I'm talking about, you know, them ones where it's like, White and then oh white right mixed. no it wasn't like then, that it wasn't okay. it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't yeah. ethnicity sorry it was nationality oh two very different things it was nationality right? but it's not even nationality because you're not a Turkish national <laughs> isn't it <laughs> you're going down that route again but I'm just saying like the ethnic like where you're yeah, originally country, from right? yeah, yeah, and this is interesting yeah. because my yeah. wife yeah. on her profile oh. she had Cyprus oh. with the site with the South Cyprus flag oh. right oh. interestingly. But I knew she was Turkish from her name, even okay. though she had used the Greek Cypriot flag okay, to, to indicate yeah. she was from Cyprus, yeah, right? Yeah. That kind of put me off. I was like, what? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. But I knew she was Turkish from her Traitor. name. Traitor. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought, you know, yeah. uh, but I put Turkish because yeah. I just, I yeah. think that just makes more sense. Yeah. So it, what, what do you put on the government forms? Is there a Turkish or? There is Turkish actually. In, 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 um, in London, because mm. there's so many Turks, I think they've actually got a Turkish um, category. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Good for you, man. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> Because I ain't got that. <laughs> I mean, there's what do that, you put there? What, what other? Uh, no, I fake put, Moroccan. <laughs> there's no Arab ever usually. Yeah, it's true. So I put, uh, I guess I put mixed, just mixed other or something like that. We don't, do you put? Do you not put white other? Do you not consider yourself white? That's another podcast. No. What do you, you mean? Don't, you don't consider yourself white? No. Do you consider Arabs white? Oh no, definitely no. not. No. Hmm. White is like, uh, as far as I know, it's like Caucasian meaning. Uh, Europeans. Yeah, that's true. But I'm just talking about like I want because because I'm thinking about their specific categories. Like if you had to put it into that category, is that right? Yeah, just know about. Yeah, if you had to put it into mm. that category, mm. I would imagine Arab fits better into white other rather than mixed. But I don't know because yeah. mixed. I think like I'm thinking like half African. No, half. but I am actually mixed. You get it? Mm. Yeah. So, sure. But I, I, as for a, a pure Arab, I don't know what they would put. Mm. It might be like maybe there's something like Asian other or but yeah, what, maybe, what maybe if you're like African? I don't know. Bro. Maybe Asian yeah. other is probably the actually if there is most that. correct one. Yeah. But what, then what if you're an uh, an African Arab? Then or do you have... just give up, man? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Brings it in get again. A new, home, get a new nationality, <laughs> ethnicity. Okay, so those are all the the kind of criteria you can put in for your thing. Yeah. And then what happens? Right. So now. At that point, oh, and a picture, of course. Mm. So I had like 10 pictures of me in sunglasses. And yeah. Like that, yeah? <laughs> you, know, you have a few pictures. I think you could put like five pictures maximum. Okay. So you have your pictures. Mm. And then what, so for, obviously I'm looking for a female. So now I go to the home page of the app and I can see, um, they're like, like cards, right? So you've got the first profile of a sister's face and her like profile, um, mm. you know, the short version of her profile under mm. it. Yeah. And I can either swipe left on her or swipe right on her. Mm. And if I swipe left, it means I'm saying no to her. Okay. And if I swipe right, it means I'm saying yes to her, right? What, saying yes to what exactly? To, 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 to match and have a conversation. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. So when you, and, and when you do this, swipe left and right, the next, the next sister comes up, her, her card, left, right, next sister, left, right, until it runs out, mm. until your criteria is exhausted. Mm. And you've either got to like, make the distance larger or lower your criteria, or whatever. Until there's more sisters in your oh, criteria. Oh, so you could literally go through them in one day. Yeah, I was going. For, yeah, I mean, because at the beginning there wasn't many sisters mm. on it, I was going yeah. through it in like ten minutes. Right. So yeah. And you can you can like accept like uh, many. In yeah, yeah as many like as you everyone want. if you want. Yeah, you could do mm. if you're really desperate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you could do that. Yeah. And then if they also swipe right on your profile when it comes up, then you match, and yeah. then you can talk. Mm. Okay. So um, yeah, that's pretty much how it works. And once you mm. start talking. Um, if the sister has her image pixelated, mm. you could ask, could you unpixelate your picture mm. so I can see what's mm. going on? That's right? kind of awkward. <laughs> yeah, it is awkward, but... That's very awkward. There's a, to be honest, the, the whole, one thing, if I have to give some advice, mm. be prepared for awkwardness when you're getting married. Like the process mm. of getting married and finding sister, it's going to be loads of awkward moments. Yeah, yeah. The initial conversation, these kind of little um, mm. nitty gritty bits, yeah. meeting the family. Yeah, of course. You know? That's true. Get over the awkwardness, man, because you're going to get true, it. But... You're going to get loads of it. Uh, I guess uh, one area I I just I don't want awkwardness is um, anything to do with like let me see you like that's just <laughs> too much. It's true. I mean, yeah. Ideally, I, it wouldn't be that way. But that's just the way the app was set up. Yeah, so yeah. unless you had, I mean, she could have had her picture already un already unpixelated, yeah, yeah. and that way is no awkwardness. Yeah, okay. But some sisters didn't want to do okay. that. So fair enough. Oh. So it just means like. Were you doing that then for myself? Requesting Annie to uh, see. I did for my wife. Mm. Yeah, I mean, mm. I can't remember. Shameless, bro. 
Exactly. <laughs> 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 gotta take a risk sometimes, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Gotta put yourself out there. Um, but mm. yeah, I mean, it was it was fairly awkward, but it's all mm. awkward, man. Mm. So yeah. I mean, it, it's got that um, it's got that effect of anything online, which is that you half feel like it's not real, isn't it? It's like it's yeah. like you know, like for example, a debate on whatever in the comments. Mm. The half of the things people are saying, they would never say face to face. Yeah. It? It's it's that kind of, got that kind of feeling. Yeah, that's true. So, so I guess it doesn't feel like much kind of commitment when you're swiping. No, nah, right there's no now. commitment. It's yeah. just it's literally just to talk to them. Yeah, you know? yeah. And then even then, yeah. you you could talk to them and say, okay, cool, let's get your mahram involved or whatever you want to do, right? Yeah. So it's all very low level mm. stuff mm. at that point. So when you both uh, accept to talk to each other, mm. then it's just like a chat thing. Yeah, it literally becomes like an instant mm. chat interface yeah and musmatch which is something that isn't fantastic kind of lets the brother and sister chat and i don't think they back then i don't think they moderated it mm. so it was up to your own mm, discretion, self, discretion mm. to mm. make that as there's no as like possible. mahram feature at all at that Not, time at that time there wasn't mm. no. okay so you would then uh the way i guess they assume people would use it is you arrange uh, between yourselves if you want to uh, like meet up or whatever. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So so, how you said it took eight months. I think it was, I mean I'm I'm giving these approximations because it was three four years ago, but I yeah. think it was a good eight months. Yeah, it was mm. it was definitely more than six months, but not a year. So, mm. Mm. you know, it was it took a while. Mm. And like I said at the very beginning, there was very few sisters on there. Mm. So I was going, I was like swiping four sisters, and it was like, oh, you're done. There's no, nobody else. Okay. So it was like that for a while. Yeah. Which is why I kept going to the events and uh. other websites and stuff. Uh. But yeah, eventually, uh. I actually remember the uh, the day I did find my my wife on there. Uh. And like I said to you previously, I wasn't expecting to find a Turkish Cypriot sister, right? Uh. So it was just one day after Juma when I was with my other friend, mm. who is also on Musmatch, mm. and we were driving home. And mm. he was like, um, oh, let me see your phone. Let me see your musmatch and see like, mm. if there's anybody on yours that is not on mine. Mm. So he took it and he opened the app and he was mm. like, there's a sister here who's like Turkish. Mm. And I was like, what? And I was in traffic. I was like driving in traffic. <laughs> I was like, sorry. <laughs> he was like, she's a Turkish sister. So he's, he's, he's turned to me as I'm driving. I was like, oh, wow. And then I, I sort of pulled over, looked at the profile for a second, mm. just saw that, yeah, she's a Turkish sister. Mm. She's practicing. She obviously mm. meets my criteria yeah. because she's in, she, I, I've seen her profile. Mm. And I just swiped right on it, mm. and then we matched straight away, mm. which meant she, 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 she already, already, she'd already yeah. <laughs> uh, mm. said yes to me, mm. right? Um, and yeah, I just dropped him home and went home. And then by the time I got home, mm. uh, I was able to chat with her, mm. and then we took it from there. Mm. Good. So, how, how much, you know, how much did you have to learn? Basically. I don't know, like, how did you decide how much to talk on the app versus, like, meeting up straight away? Because it's, mm. meeting up is a big jump, but then you don't want to chat too much either, do you? That's right. I mean, the my best advice is to try and get a, a mahram involved, if possible. Like, mm. if you move to WhatsApp, you can make a group chat with, the, with a mahram as well. Mm. So that's one way around it. Or, I also, I also just thought to myself, it's probably better just to meet up and see if there's compatibility um, sooner rather than later. So that was pretty much our mentality. Mm, okay. um, I can't remember exactly how long we waited mm. before we met up, mm. but um, she lived she lived very close. Mm. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Mm. Um, I was I was saying the whole of England, but she ended up living like 15 minute drive away from me. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it wasn't difficult to meet up, and yeah, mm. yeah, man. It's, so mm. go on. So you, you, yeah. So I was gonna say is it sounds like a, I never thought of that before, but it sounds good to basically meet up sooner rather than later, basically. Yeah. Because, firstly, meeting up, um, it shows it shows the woman that you're serious. Because a lot of men, um, although they, yeah, they have good the, the good intentions. But they may be whatever intimidated or whatever, and so hmm. by being willing to meet up now, it's like uh, shown that commitment, if you like, that and that um, investment, right. if you like. So that's good from that side. And then also, it's like, you know, when you meet up, it's more than asking questions. You know, it's like you might hmm. go to their house, they might go to yours. You see what their house is like. You see how they keep their house. You see, you know, uh, their family and all of that. So 
that's yeah. really good that's true and there's there's only so much you can find out about somebody from mm. instant messaging them mm. right mm. um they can hide all sorts of things about themselves yeah, themselves yeah. so yeah i think it's better mm. to meet up sooner rather than later mm. it saves heartbreak if there's going to be any sort of heartbreak involved yeah. And yeah, like you say, you just get to see a lot more mm. uh, uh, from them when you just sit in, a, even if they sit in a room in silence, you can just, like you say, you go to their parents' house or go to their house. Mm. You can see things that just tell you about, a bit about their personality. Yeah. You know, and you talk to them face to face. Again, are they loud? Are they quiet? Mm. Are they rude? Are mm. they, do they swear? Do they this, do they that? You get to understand who they are as a person, right? Yeah. That you wouldn't be able to do over instant, mess instant messaging. Mm. But what you don't want to do is wait four months, five months to do that. Yeah build up an impression of them in your mind, yeah. meet them and think, oh, well, that's not what I thought. God damn. <laughs> yeah. then, or, or, or worse, yeah. she, you're not what she thought yeah, yeah. and you fall in love pretty much or about yeah, yeah. to and she's like, oh no, sorry, yeah. I thought, I didn't realise you were five foot one. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then, you know, she, you're heartbroken. Yeah. yeah because, and that could have been avoided if you met her in the first yeah, two, three yeah, weeks. Yeah. You know? Definitely. Like, I think, honestly, I think that happens a lot. Yeah, I think uh, not so much through Muzmatch, but through any social media kind of thing. It's like, it just seems like a very common actually. Is that true? Do you think? I think so. And um, <coughs> there's another story of like um, I did I did um, meet another sister mm. uh, from another side. I think it may have been from Muzmatch as well. Um, and she lived a little bit outside of London. And again, I was I, Hamdi, I made a decision to like meet quick sooner rather than later, right? because <coughs> it seemed to be a good connection but then when i met her she ended up being taller than me mm. right uh so it was obviously instant like she wasn't attracted to me and i wasn't attracted to her oh. right but had we waited three months yeah imagine that yeah. you know and the i mean that, that that occurred because she had pretty much lied about her height on oh, the app she? yeah mm. which i don't know why she did that mm. but um but bro love overcomes all <laughs> yeah is that not true uh, not in this case oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah um I mean, that's just an example of like yeah if you wait you're you're, you're setting yourself up potentially for there's no benefits whatsoever no, to waiting aren't. really and again you can act, you can you can fall into things that you shouldn't fall into if you yeah. wait too long as well any talking can be uh done in person and it's more uh, you know you're gonna learn more from it in person yeah you know you see the body language you see all of this stuff to be honest yeah and um, I always, I always have the thinking that, you know, seeing the family is a very big deal and very important. And it's almost like 30 or 40% of the decision is, is on the family. I mean, especially the yeah. dad, yeah. like for a man, he should look at, you know, his, his the potential uh, wife's uh, dad, you know? Yeah. So how did, what was it like when you met up? Was it like uh, everyone, fam parents there or? What? Yeah, I met, I met her parents. We went to mm. uh, a restaurant. Mm. Um, it was nice. It was like a summer's day. We went, we went, went and sort of sat outside. Mm. Um, was I'll it just, a Turkish Cypriot it, restaurant? It was a Turkish restaurant. It, yeah. Actually, well, yeah, it was a Turkish restaurant. Right. Gokyuz, so Londoners will know about. Oh, Gokyuz. okay, heard yeah. of it many times. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, that was. It went smoothly, man. Um, can't complain about that first meeting. I'm, mm. I basically spoke to her dad mostly. Yeah. Um, her sister and her brother-in-law was also there, I think, <clears throat> uh, or they stopped by for a few minutes. Mm. And um, yeah, it just sort of broke, it breaks the ice mm. and it means that then, you know, you can set up a next meeting and then yeah. if, if everything has gone wrong with that first meeting, it just snowballs yeah. from there. Yeah, yeah. You don't really have to do much. It's yeah. sort of like natural now. Natural, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was good. Handy. And your, I bet your parents were happy when you said, you know, someone who's uh, um, not only Turkish, Turkish Cypriot. And not only Turkish Cypriot, but mm. My wife's mum used yeah. to work in my granddad's factory like 30 years ago. <laughs> so our family actually knew each other, uh, yeah. but um, they hadn't stayed in touch. Uh, so when I, when I said, um, you know, who she was or what the family name was, yeah. my mum was like, oh, we know her. Like yeah. she used to work for my yeah, dad and we, we grew up knowing her. Um, so yeah, they, they mm. yeah, it was all alhamdulillah from that perspective. Mm. Perfect. Perfect. Pretty much. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Very good. So yeah. So what do you recommend Muzmatch? Like I said, man, I haven't been on it recently. Yeah. So I don't know how it's mm. gone, right? I don't mm. know if it's like being mm. turned to, like into a Tinder. You could have used it as a Tinder before, but you could like, you know, filter stuff out. I don't know if it's still like that. Mm. I recommend what I used back then. I actually know four different brothers for other than myself who got married through Muzmatch. Mm. So it works, <clears> you know? Mm. Um, Did they also like do the thing meet up quickly or you don't know? Not all of them. Mm. Um, 
I just think that's so risky, man, to like chat a lot. Oh right, like I thought you said to meet up. No. Yeah, it is risky. Um, he is risky. Mm. I think most of them did meet up quickly. Yeah. One of them used Musmatch because you know he's he's not fully practicing as well, so he used it like the filters a bit mm. not so filtered. Yeah. So it was kind of like a different kind of journey for him, but the result was the same. They they had the nikah fairly quickly. Alhamdulillah. Mm. So. Yeah, I, I would I recommend it. I can't recommend the app today because I haven't used it in years. Yeah. So I can't recommend that. But Okay, what about like in general online thing? Because I'll tell you what, my thinking has always been like, it's best to find a wife through someone you know. Yeah. Uh, through, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really have to be family, but you know, through somebody who you already trust. Basically, right. that's it. So parents, brother, sister, um, uh, and then anyone you, that you really trust. Because if they know someone and they're good, then etc. That's the assumption. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. And actually, you kind of did end up getting married in that way, if you think yeah. about it, from what you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then I guess this is an option, isn't it, for, for people that don't have that ability, isn't it? That's right. And I, like I said, I didn't have that as an option, really. I didn't yeah. have that many practicing friends. Mm. And maybe that's my fault, being a little bit of an introvert at times. <clears throat> um, but I didn't grow up practicing, right? So that's one, one of the reasons. And again, my pra my family were not practicing, so I didn't really have that community around me to sort of yeah, tap yeah. into, tap yeah. into, and say, "Hey, can you help me find a wife?" Because I mm. just didn't have that, mm. and we didn't have those connections. Yeah. Um, so in my case, online was really the only option, mm. to be honest. Mm. So if that if if people find themselves in that situation, then they, then they should use it, you know. Mm. And again, going online is is a tool, and you can use tools in different ways, right? Mm. A knife can be used for positive things, or it could be used for negative things. Mm. It's up to you how you want to use it. Was a match I could have used it to find a girlfriend if I wanted to, mm. or or I could use it to find a wife. You know, mm. it's up to you. Mm. Again, I don't know if the app today is the same way, mm. but I'm sure there are plenty of websites and stuff mm. like that. Plenty of meetings you can go to, events, yeah. sorry, yeah. Uh, where you can, you know, if your intentions are correct and you've got these criteria set up, mm. then it can be beneficial for you. Mm. So um, I think even people with that sort of network set up, right? They've got their family looking. Even then, I think it's it should be done. Mm. If you're serious about getting married and you know you're in a quote-unquote rush to get married then i think why not use them as long as you're mm. approaching them correctly it can be you know quite you know mm. i, I want to say halal but you know as 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 permissible as possible in those situations right mm. and did you when you you know before you actually decided to get married wait we actually how long was it from you know may, let, let's say meeting the first time till deciding you definitely you know want to go ahead okay so we met in April, and I think we decided for sure in like July. So whatever that okay. is. Okay, that's so, not that short then. No. Okay. I thought it was like. No, it wasn't that short. That was like deciding that we we're actually going to get married. Like, and like we were just like we were pretty sure from the beginning, but mm. it was just like okay now, mm. as in like we're talking about setting a date now. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. So um, yeah, yeah. I think I mm. think and then we got married in September. So. Yeah. So what is that? Six months. I think it's about six months in total. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what was I gonna say, man? Uh, yeah. So did you do any like? Uh, did you ask about her? You know, from you know after you know maybe you met her and everything mm. once, twice, whatever. Did you then find out if you knew anyone that knew of her or? I her tried family? to, but yeah. weirdly, I didn't know. I didn't have any mutual friends with her. Yeah. Um, in that sense. Mm. So I couldn't really do that. Mm. I was relying mainly on my interactions with her, how mm. she interacted with her family. Yeah. Um, and yeah, mm. man, just istikhara. Mm. And that's it, really. Mm. Yeah. But it would be, if I did have that option, I, I would recommend mm. people do like that. Like you tried to do that anyway. I right? tried, but there yeah. was nobody who I could. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's, that's pretty important as well if it's an option. Yeah, know? I agree. That's why, that's the only, maybe that's the only thing that makes me feel like uh, finding someone through someone you know that's th what makes that superior you know other than that it's mm. maybe maybe it's the same in a way so yeah alhamdulillah so you know i don't know what i'm what i'm hearing from you and i think that's really good you know if anyone's not married uh, is the fact that you knew what you wanted you kind of thought of your criteria and it seems like you didn't like do it half-hearted at all so once you decided and you know you're ready and you decide you want to do it then you just pretty much uh, did whatever you needed to do like you went to the events you did the mm. different online things and you know i don't know i just hear of a lot of people dilly dallying and i think that this just comes down to 
immaturity perhaps yeah. i think it sounds like you really uh, you were mature at the time but for whatever reason yanni that's a whole other podcast a lot of guys are not mature enough to like be like yes i want to get married and i'm gonna now take the actual steps right. rather than oh i made a muslim match account because you know no one has to know about that mm. and now i'm chatting to people and yeah my intention is to get married but I, I just don't want to actually take it to a serious level when I'm talking to her dad or I'm meeting right. her. Yeah. And it, you're in that phase for like two years, you know. Yeah. You don't want to be in that thing. So what you did, I think, you know, it's really good in terms of just going straight for it kind of thing. Alhamdulillah. I mean, people in that situation, they're either... They're not serious, not serious, serious enough about their dean mm. in that situation, in which case is a big indicator that you're not ready for marriage either, right? Mm. So if there's anybody in that situation, I would say delete Muslim match, mm. work on yourself because you're not at the right level probably, right? Mm. You could find someone who's on your level dean-wise and get married and work together. Mm. But at the same time, you could also do what you just said, which is, you know, you find a girl and talk to her for two years mm. without any mahram involved. Mm. And that's dangerous you know mm. you could fall into a lot of different things mm. so if that's what you're doing now and you want to safeguard your dean i would say step back and work <coughs> on yourself get yourself to a level where you are serious right yeah. because those people who are dilly dallying as you say they're not they're not really looking to get married right they, they think mm. maybe they want to yeah. but they're not serious about it so if you're not yeah. serious you've got to ask yourself why am i not that mm. serious about it is mm. it a dean issue mm. am i subconsciously mm. worried about it am i subconsciously worried about money what mm. is the issue mm get to that get to the crux of that and then you will find yourself making those concrete steps you know yeah. i think uh, there was someone who said uh, someone uh, i can't remember who said it right but it was like um if you're if you're not making dua for it last further than night you don't really want it mm. you know and i feel that's really mm. powerful it's like mm. yeah. if i ever think of oh man i'm making dua to allah for something i ask myself have i made dua last further than night have i got up for kiyama led for that mm. and i haven't it's like maybe i just don't really want it then mm. you know yeah, you, yeah. you think it's important yeah. but you know, if we it's give like a bit fake of intentions. Yeah. It? It's like you go to sleep at like 2 a.m. and you don't put a really a Fajr alarm. Mm. It's like, did you really intend right. to pray Fajr? That's right. That's right. It's one of the, inten it's like an intention just makes you feel good rather yeah. than like. That's right. So yeah. you've got to ask yourself, do I want, do I actually want to get married? What are the reasons for that? And if you see yourself taking like dilly dallying decisions or not taking any action <clears throat> at all, you just got to get to the bottom of why that is basically. Mm. Mm. There goes a video, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it lasted a long time. That did, that did work quite well. Handedly. Anything else to add before we wrap it up? Um, I feel like uh, you just interviewed me today. Um, yeah, I did. That's you did, pretty really. much what it was. I'm just it? like, I'm just thinking like, the episode 49 was like an interview, someone was an interview. So that's kind of like yeah. I want to interview you next, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll come to that another time. Inshallah. But um, I don't think there's anything else I want to add. This. Inshallah. Cool. Okay, yeah. Thanks, bro. And, uh, Maybe see you in another 10 or 20 episodes. <laughs> inshallah, inshallah. I guess, subhanakallahumma bihamdika, shadu an la ilaha, and astaghfiruka to wa alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, I forgot to say, go to mindheistpodcast.com if you want to ask us questions anonymously or not, uh, through email or anonymously, whatever. Um, comments on this episode, comments on other episodes, uh, questions, etc., suggestions. Please uh, get in touch. Uh, yalla, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi